All right, what up, guys? All right, so I wanted to do this strong remix production video. I got some questions for you from you guys, and uh, I got some here. I screenshotted my favorite ones, so I'll go through them later. But for now, let me just show you the project. Here it is. It's a total mess. Um, the break is a completely different project, so it's just bounced in like pretty big sections because the CPU for this project was destroying me. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you the break project as well. Yeah, I mean, let's not make this video too long, but I'll go over a few things. Uh, I'll go over some of the questions that were, were asked and, uh, yeah, show you a few of the things. Um, first off, yeah, this is a lot of channels. This is, I don't think it's actually 113 channels, but, um, oh, it is actually 113 channels. Yeah, it is. That's a lot of channels. 113. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. A lot of it, I had to bounce to audio. So, I can't, I can't show you everything. Also, I don't want to show you everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Let me go over a few things. Uh, first off, I like to do, like, little details that are, um, you know, that have, like, that give the track something special so previously I was working on a project that had these bells in them and then the project I ended up trashing but the nice thing about always working and always producing is then you end up with like little details that you're not going to use from a different track but like you could pitch it and put it in um, another track so I got these bells here that sort of start off the track and it pans from left to right da -na -na -na. panning as you can see there see like I just, I just did like a little of that, and that's with reverb, and then you know you bounce it out. But I think that was massive, a massive preset. But it's that kind of stuff that's fun, and uh, adds a little bit of, you know, something um, interesting. And then I start with some hats. Uh, a good thing to do with hats or any like sort of element that you want to put out wide. So I don't keep the hats right in the middle. Um, is put a sample delay on them. So what you do with the sample delay is uh, here I can show you. If you use Ableton, um, I'll redo it. Let's see what eight was that like eight. It doesn't really matter. This product's done now. But so let's say I take it off. You, you're not gonna be able to hear because this. I'm sorry guys. I couldn't get the sound set up perfect. Uh, I tried my best. It took like a few hours to try to figure out how to make this video, and I did my best. Anyway, uh, so you right now it's in the middle. But uh, if we put a simple delay on it, and then you take off sync and you make a time, bring the time all the way down, dry wet up, um, and then right now it's in the middle. Then you bring this out a little bit, and what this does is it basically like delays it really subtly to this like oh like the delay is really really quick. See, it's only like eight milliseconds. So what that ends up doing is it it does a delay out all the way to the right. Um, eight milliseconds after the initial hit. Um, I think I'm explaining this right. I don't honestly don't really know how it works, but it ends up making it really wide. So that's wide, and that's right in the middle. And then when you have a lot of stuff, you don't want to have your whole track pushing through the middle. You want it to fill the whole spectrum. So that's a little trick. You can put it on leads. You can put it on anything that you want to be at wide. Um, like let's say you have like a big reverb, like uh, some nice reverb chords. Or some, something like hats, um, something you don't need to be your central element. You can push out wide. Uh, and that's also, you can just do that by panning something left. Let's say I have a few, L or left or right. Let's say I have a few different leads, um, like on a more progressive track. Then you can take a lead, and one lead goes left, one lead goes right. And it sort of fills up the spectrum in a nice way. So that not everything is forced through the middle, and then you end up with a really like shitty sounding track. All right, anyway. So let's go over uh, some of the stuff. I know one of my questions was just about, I mean, the idea of this remix. And at the time when I made this remix, I had first received the track Jericho from Tom, Tom Star, and that, that you know that's now out in size. And part of, and I was playing it out. And part of what made that, that track so sick is the um, is the lead in it when it goes the horns of Jericho, and the lead goes ba, and it holds as underneath, and it goes dum 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 dum. So I was inspired by that, and I was like, I want to do something like that. And I, I had already been asked to remix this track, and this already this has also a da. So I wanted to hold it out. 
You know, it's held out and then it does a stutter. Uh, but that sort of reminded me of Jericho and it gives it that power on the second drop. So, you know, you have the first drop, which is just clean. Uh, first drop is right here. Right, and then the last drop. So, yeah, so you see, you know, that power that that adds. Um, along with a lot of other stuff. So let me let me go over um, the the actual drop and all the elements that make this really fat. So the main sort of sound that your ear hears is a spire, which is <laughs> where is this? This project is such a mess. Uh, no, that's bass. Uh, oh, that's all. I'll find this buyer. No, that's bass. Uh, is this it? Yeah. That's not it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I should have spent more time preparing this so I knew where things were. Um, this <coughs> is one of them. I mean, this is one of them. But that's not, obviously not. Here, this one. There it is. All right. So... So that's sort of like the main idea, and it's almost like that kind of unity sound, and uh, it's just like a simple spire. Let's see, I'll take all the EQs and the reverbs and shit off. Um, and the LFO tool for side chain. So it already has a nice little like tone to it, but then you can press it down, EQ, to make it more like a interface and annoying. A little bit of reverb, another compressor. And that really gives it a click. The attacks up pretty pretty hard. And then LFO to give us some side chain. I always use LFO for side chain. And this is a really quick little side chain because I want it to hit really hard. Um, on, honestly, there's no rule for side chaining. Uh, for me, I I enjoy LFO tool because you can really see the audio ducking itself. It doesn't have to do with a kick. It's really just like you cannot have a kick on. And if you keep the LFO tool on, then it will um, side chain anyway, which is cool. It's actual audio ducking. Uh, and, uh, you know, usually when I put something in, I'll like load up. Here, let me just load one up. Uh, I'll load up an LFO tool. Um, I usually go to like preset six, start here, listen to it. You know, I'll turn this one off that I had. This one, listen, so like, listen, this is going to be really whack. So that's really intense side chaining, you know, then you can bring this up. But that's not quick enough for this. So, you know, eventually you can move this around. And then, like, I I guess the other one, you know, I ended up with, uh, with that. So, yeah. You just, it's a trial and error kind of thing for me, the sidechain. And then, obviously, you want everything to be sidechain the same, so it all ducks. So, you have this lead. Then we have this. Just, it's like, I think, literally an initial preset for Massive. I like using an initial presets to give some body. And then a little thingy that goes like wah, wah. that's Spire as well. Um, I think these are honestly just presets, guys. So I don't give a shit if you want to look at them. Kazuki. I don't know what pack this is from. Uh, I think it's from some special pack that I have. That's cool. Not actually a bank that comes with it. Uh, same thing. I'll, I'll show you this one too. I don't give a shit. Whatever. Um, here's this one. Yeah, there's, so there's that, um, what's this, oh that's the snares, so yeah, then I started layering drums on top of it to give it more grit, that is important, this has a lot of drums, uh, then I have this whole, this whole drum section, I'll play it by itself, this is white noise, with a little bit of like delay on it, and I bounce it out. This is a uh, drum. Same drum pitched down, I think. And all this stuff has sidechain on it, so, you know, whatever, like, a little bit of processing. Uh, yeah. Then the hats come in. Is 
then these drums come in, you know, which is cool. All right, then um, you have the bass. So I'll play all the leads together first. This is a snare as well. Uh, so there's three snares sort of that like just hit. To be honest, you probably don't need all these elements. I'm I'm probably overdoing it, but uh you know. I've learned now since I've made this remix that you don't need to do so many things, but I was like, you know, going ham and layering to make this sound sound unique and weird. And a lot of the elements you probably wouldn't be able to hear the difference without it. You know, but here the the main lead. But the thing that makes the lead sound really powerful, first of all, is a kick on it. So the kick hits with it. The first three hits are with the kick. Bum, bum, bum. Then I have bass. Um, the bass is this. So I got a really, really funny question on this one. See, you can already see it says Earthquake Cry to Remix. Um, because someone asked me, and Solo, can you go through the processing on the bass layer that sounds like Earthquake, Grad or Mix bass? <laughs> and uh, I can't because I didn't do the processing because I sampled it from Earthquake. Um, if you listen to Earthquake, the uh, Earthquake Remix by Crider, the f at, at 30 seconds it's bum 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 bum, and if you go into the audio, you can take out a clean hit of bass. Um, I don't think Crider knows that I stole his bass for this, but uh, if he did, I'm sure he'd just laugh. But it's a great, great bass, so why not use it? Um, and then, to be honest, I'm not very good with delays. So what I do a lot is actually put in delay. So with this one, I have the, I've used literally just audio as delay. See, so it goes. I think I bounced this down. Yeah, I did. But this isn't just a straight up bass. I then took the sample from Crider and then I probably put like a multi brand, multi band compressing, compressor, compressor, which is somewhere in here. Multi band dynamics, it's called, on it. I probably just boosted the, the lows and turned down the highs a little bit. I'm not exactly sure. But the problem is that you can see when I tried to play the second drop, it was already starting to clip a little bit. Not clip, uh, the CPU was already starting to mess up. So anyway, so yeah, that's the uh, the bass. You know, once you put the bass with all the leads. Drop drums and lead, lead, drums, lead. There's a lot of little layers that make up this sound. The bum, 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 bum. Um. And actually, you can hear the delay on that bass is kind of sexy. It's cool. And the reverb on the main lead is nice. It has space, but it's also tight, which is nice. I don't like putting too much reverb on stuff, personally. I like to keep things tight and dry. Because when you play it out in a big space, it's going to, you know, there's going to be reverb and there's going to be space added to it. You know, if when people put way too much reverb on stuff, usually they don't sound as good out. It might sound nice you know, on your laptop, but I like stuff to sound clubby and tight. So anyway, there's, then there's the kick that comes with it. There's a sub bass that goes along with the kick.